A viewer wrote to me recently asking me to look at connectorization on these small compressors in more depth. I got to thinking about it and realized, you know, he was right. I've shown you what I've used, but never really got into why I used it. Want to know why? Be sure and watch to the end so you don't miss anything. Welcome everyone. We are here deep in the bowels of the Young Hang Hot Rod Shop. And in today's episode, we're going to look at the whys of connector and wire selection and what might make sense for your application. Recently, there has been a huge outpouring of support for my channel and a generous viewer contacted me asking how he could support the work we do here. My reply, easy. Check out the targetforge.net website, consider becoming a channel member on YouTube, or simply hit that thanks button below the viewing window. Any of those are great ways to support what we do here. Now, let's get into this. First off, the Anderson line of power pole connectors have been a staple in the high current DC connector arena for a very long time. They feature polycarbonate housings and brilliant design. Some of the EVs I have helped bring to market still use them for high service DC connecting work. What do I mean by high service? Simply stated, a connector that gets connected and disconnected over and over throughout its life, that is high service. All connectors are not created equal in this regard. One thing the power pole connectors do very well is self-cleaning. As the contacts are made and unmade, they easily clear debris, oxidation, basically stuff that prevents a good, low resistance electric connection. And that, my friends, is super important when it comes to high current DC applications. They also feature a strong stainless steel backing spring that controls the pressure between the contacts. On the vehicle side of my solution, I went with a larger cable and connector than I needed for the compressor connection for one simple reason. And that will make sense in a little bit. One thing to keep in mind when installing high current DC cabling on your vehicle is fusing for the cable you are using. The fuse protects the wire. Number two, remember that high current DC needs heavy cable. And the longer the run of cable, the greater the voltage drop will be from point A to point B. Why does that matter? Well, small DC motors like the one on your portable compressor can overload quickly in an under voltage condition, possibly leading to extreme overheating and premature failure. Having a smaller than needed conductor is a great way to create a voltage drop at the load. Don't create that problem for yourself. The third thing to be sure you do is properly install quality wire with good insulation rated for the environment you're putting it in. Remember, a vehicle sees conditions that can change dramatically over time like salt, water, chemicals, vibration, shock loads, if you drive like my wife, temperature extremes, you name it. Be sure the wire and how it is installed are up to the task. A bit of well done research and care when installing might just prevent this. To be perfectly clear, I'm not telling you what to use on your vehicle or how to use it. Do your own research. Do not follow me blindly when wiring high current DC on your vehicle. You know the drill. Don't try this at home, kids. Ask your parents first. Don't follow me. I'm an idiot. Stuff like that. There was once a great debate early on in large scale power distribution near the turn of the previous century that saw two very famous men pitted against one another. 
Nikola Tesla versus Thomas Edison, AC versus DC, the wreckage that Edison left behind them pursuing his ideas is actually quite horrifying. <laughs> and in my opinion, tarnishes his memory. He was also entrenched with what turns out was a pretty bad idea. History notwithstanding, high current DC distribution needs lots and lots of copper. I use the 50 amp SB50 connectors on the vehicle side of things and short runs of eight gauge wire fused for 40 amps. If I was stretching this out like to the tailgate or to the bed, I would have increased that cable one or two sizes at least. Find yourself a good wire size chart and see what is required for your needs. The one on your screen right now, I stole from Blue Sea Systems. They make really nice stuff. I'm using it for education purposes only, so I hope they don't send a fleet of lawyers my way. You might even want to go larger on the connector, and the power pole line of connectors goes quite a bit higher than what I've shown you here. These 50 amp SB50 units work just fine for my needs. If you pick a color, use that color throughout your system as many colors will only mate with the same color housing. There is also no male or female housing. So that can help make things a bit more streamlined and simplified as well. Let's look at the wire size chart again for a moment. I consider DC motors to be somewhat sensitive to voltage drop. So this column applies for me. The compressor draws 26 amps. So I would use the 30 amp fuse and wire column. That yields a 10 foot limit on 10 gauge wire. To get to the back of a typical pickup truck, you're going to need 8 or 6 gauge at 50 amps. Don't cheap out here. This is not the place to be frugal. On the compressor side of things, my hybrid designs specifically, and on my solar panel box for the solar panel connection, I went with a smaller footprint connector and a lower current connector because on all of my measurements for the sustained current on a GXCS2, none of them have ever gone over 26 amps. These smaller power pole connectors offer all the great features of their larger cousins. Just smaller. These are also scalable in terms of the contacts used. The contacts can be found in 15, 30, and 45 amp capacities. The housings stay the same, the footprint stays the same, only the contact and the wire used change. Pretty nifty. There is a company called Powerworks, it's spelled W-E-R-X, that manufactures some really nice stuff for the Anderson line of connectors. And the quality is very high. Unfortunately, so is the price on some items, especially the panel mount connectors. I have been exploring 3D printing as a way to make some panel mount adapters that still retain the legendary housings and contacts of the power pole connector line, but allow nice, inexpensive mounting options for panel power transitions. All of these I'll show you are not my designs, but ones I found searching the printables.com website. I have some ideas on what I would do differently if I designed these holders myself. And if I have time, I might just explore them. They'll be on the website. By now, many of you that watch my channel know that I freaking hate alligator clips. They are unreliable and unsafe in my opinion. Not only are they not very good at creating and maintaining a reliable electrical connection, they take their unsafe nature to all new levels by getting you to use them with the hood of your vehicle open while the engine is running with all sorts of rapidly spinning belts and fans just waiting to catch a dangling wire, your finger, an ex-wife. I put connectors even on my AC-DC supply for the compressor for my original GXCS2. And I've made adapters so that I can easily use the smaller connectors that I put on the CS2 hybrid. 
soon my personal CS2 will become a CS2 hybrid as well, because why not have it work in even more situations? Check out that video up here. Having the appropriate crimper sure makes life easy, but soldering these pins on is acceptable as well. But bear in mind that it will take a good heat source, depending on the pin and the cable size you're using. PowerWorks does have some great crimper options at a few different price points, so be sure to check them out. If you do shop there, tell them Target Forge sent you, and that they should really consider supporting the channel. Copper is an exceptional conductor of heat and turns out electricity, but it wants to pull that heat away as fast as you apply it, so be sure to bring some wattage to the party. Cold test every connection you make, after they cool, of course, and ensure you have sized things to cover your needs. A word for the risk averse, going up a gauge on the wire is rarely a bad idea. Why did I put such a large connector on the Tundra and the Honda? I also wanted a high current service connection to those vehicles that I could use for other purposes beyond this swell little portable compressor. Maybe a remote winch, a set of jumper cables. Bottom line, I have access to my vehicle's 12 volt system that doesn't require me to open the hood. This selection gives me options. Options I might actually use one day. Coming up in a few short seconds is more awesome content to support your air gun habit. Be sure to check out the videos at the end. If you watch this far, I'm sure you will like them as well. Explore my channel, explore the website, my playlists, check out the Amazon links. Be a light in the darkness, friends. Have a great week.